Have you ever been told to make hay while the sun shines, but maybe don't know exactly what that means? Well, it's an old proverb that means to take advantage of something while the timing or conditions are ideal. This phrase likely dates back hundreds of years to medieval English farmers. They would take advantage of hot, dry days to cut and gather hay, since it would be ruined if it got wet. Eventually, over time, it became an expression to make use of your time before you lose the opportunity to do so. Simple enough. If someone asks if you're feeling better after being sick, you might tell them that you're right as rain. The origin of this old weather-related phrase is debatable, but there are a couple of theories. The phrase straight as an arrow has a similar context to right as rain. The word right has medieval English roots meaning straight, like straight line. Another theory, in literature, rain was often used to represent things getting better. Eventually, over time, this phrase became a part of our everyday lingo. Well, here's another rain phrase for you. To take a rain check is as old and American as, well, baseball. If a game was postponed or impacted by weather, it was common for tickets to still be good for future games. Kind of like a rain check policy. It's not uncommon to see rain checks used at sporting events now, sometimes even for shopping deals or when trying to schedule a meetup with someone. Corral, I know you're busy right now, but you gotta check out this latest data. It's amazing. Oh boy, well, it looks like I gotta take a rain check on this. With Science Says, I'm Corrales Ortiz. The thermometer doesn't always reflect how it may feel outside. The heat index is known as apparent temperature. It's measured by both combining the temperature and the humidity and how it feels like to the human body. High humidity means that the air is saturated with moisture. When the atmosphere becomes too saturated, it'll stop absorbing the water vapor. So when you sweat in humid conditions, it becomes more difficult for the sweat to evaporate. It'll be harder for the body to also regulate its temperature, which is why it will feel hotter. The heat index is measured under shady conditions and light winds, so values will be up to 15 degrees higher when you're exposed to the sun directly. There's an example of a National Weather Service chart used to measure heat index. The different colors correspond to the caution level one should take based off the exposure or strenuous activity. Let's compare a city with temperatures in the 90s that has humidity levels above 50% versus a city in the desert with triple digit heat and humidity below 15%. It'll feel hotter in the city with the temperatures in the 90s versus the one in the hundreds because of the humidity. If the humidity is even low enough, the heat index could be slightly lower than the actual temperature. We'll begin to see these 80 to 90 degree days more often, with July and August being our hottest months here in the Mid-South. Heat is the number one weather-related killer, so make sure to stay cool and hydrated often this summer. With THB 11, I'm Corrales Ortiz. Have you ever heard of it raining animals? Maybe not cats and dogs, but more like fish and frogs. This has actually happened around the world, and for the small town of Yoro, Honduras, it's an annual event. The phenomenon is called lluvia de peces, or rain of fish, and has been reported every year there between May and June, usually after a strong storm. There isn't much evidence of people actually seeing fish fall from the sky, but somehow the ground ends up covered with them, a lot of which are even native to the local rivers and lakes. One theory to why this happens is because of water spouts. The strong winds could easily lift animals, trees, and buildings. Water spouts off the coast can act like a hose and suck up fish into the sky and dump them far away. This phenomenon has also happened here in Arkansas, with fish falling from the sky in Texarkana just last year. But for our landlocked state, there's a much different theory. Some experts felt it was due to a nervous flock of birds who just happened to drop their meals during takeoff. This almost makes cloudy with the chance of meatballs seem like a reality. From falling fish to the high seas. Do you remember this scene from the Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? The green flash is a real but rare phenomenon, although don't expect souls to be coming back from the dead. Think of Earth's atmosphere like a prism, separating and bending light into different colors. When the sun is higher in the sky, the light has a shorter distance to travel, giving off more blue, green, and violet colors during the day. When it's lower, the distance is longer, creating more of those red, orange, and yellow hues that we see in the morning or evening. If weather conditions and timing are just right, during sunrise and sunset when the colors begin to separate, 
our eyes can capture the green light. It's usually brief, a flash, if you will, giving the phenomena its name. Here's one more for you. Imagine waking up one day and your home literally feels like an oven. That's what happened in Copperhill, Texas on June 15th in 1960 in a phenomenon known as the Copperhill Heat Burst or Satan's Storm. It was a normal summer night with storms in the distance when all of a sudden, winds began to gust over 75 miles per hour. The town was suddenly hit by a burst of hot air and within minutes, temperatures jumped from 70 degrees to more than 100 degrees. People who lived there recall their homes feeling like saunas, the air outside scorching with lightning flashing. By the morning, some fields, shrubs and plants were all burned to a crisp. A heat burst happens when air pushed high in the atmosphere rapidly drops down to the ground and that air is dry and heats rapidly. Heat bursts are rare and normally see about 20 degree increases, but during that night in Texas, temperatures rose by more than 40 degrees in a short period of time. So you never know what mother nature might be cooking up when it comes to our weather. With this week's Science Says, I'm Corrales Ortiz. If you aren't feeling well, you've probably told someone you're feeling under the weather. Well, to understand the origins of this phrase, we head to the high seas. When storms would hit out in the ocean, a ship's crew would head below deck or under the weather bow to ride it out. So in a very real sense, they would go under the weather to avoid becoming seasick. Other sources also link this phrase back to a newspaper in the 1830s. Another expression you've probably heard used a lot, it's raining cats and dogs. One theory suggests it may have come from the Greek expression katadox, meaning contrary to experience of belief. So basically meaning it may have been raining unusually or unbelievably hard. It's one of several similar expressions found across many languages as a way to use colorful imagery to describe heavy rain. Finally, are you a risk taker? Do you throw caution to the wind? Well, if you've ever read the famous poem Paradise Lost from 1667, then you may remember the line and fear of death deliver to the winds. Sound familiar? How about this one? In the 1300s, English mystic and spiritual writer Richard Roll penned the phrase, a fervor that throws discretion to the winds. One thing to keep in mind, this was originally written in Latin, so there's a chance the real meaning may have been lost in translation like many other phrases. But it is interesting to see how literature has been a big source in providing clues to some of these weather-based expressions. With this week's Science Says, I'm Corrales Ortiz. If you hear your local meteorologist talking about a 60% chance of rain, do you normally think that there's a 60% chance that it will rain where you live? Well, to understand percent chance of rain, we need to understand how rain is forecasted. The National Weather Service uses POP or probability of precipitation when talking about the chance of precipitation in a specific forecast area. The POP represents both confidence and area, and it is defined as the probability that a select area Area will receive at least 0.01 of rain. The formula POP equals C times A is used to express percentages where the variable C represents the confidence that the precipitation will occur somewhere in the forecast area. And variable A represents the percent of the area that will receive measurable precipitation. So let's say that a forecaster is 90% confident that rain will occur over 70% of the forecast area. C is 0.9 and A is 0.7 you get a percentage of roughly 0.6 or 60% chance of rain. Remember this next time you hear that there's a 20% chance of rain in the forecast, but it's raining a lot where you are. Most people aren't always staying in one spot all day. You will likely be out doing errands, working, or going to school. Traveling increases the chances you'll end up seeing the rain. With THB 11, I'm Corrales Ortiz. The phrase dog days of summer has nothing to do with actual dogs in the heat trying to stay cool as what some of us might be imagining. This is in reference to the star Sirius, also called the dog star. It's the brightest star in the sky that is found in the Canis Major constellation, known as the greater dog. The phrase has been used to describe the hottest period of summer from July 3rd to August 11th. And during this time, the star Sirius rises and sets with the sun in the same region in the sky. 
Around July 23rd, Sirius and the Sun would align and get so bright that the ancient Greeks and Romans thought that the star could give off heat like the Sun, which correlated to the hotter weather that was found during that period. But climatologically, mid-July to mid-August are the hottest periods during the summer, but it's the Earth's tilt that plays a role in this and not the star Sirius. Summer in the Northern Hemisphere is actually caused by the Earth's tilt being closer to the Sun, which causes the Sun's rays to hit at a more direct angle. The days will be longer and hotter because of this. And another issue is that the position of these stars is always shifting. The position of the sky that we see now will shift at least one degree every 50 years or so. So this means the astronomical setup that we see now isn't the same one as what the Greeks and Romans saw back then. So thousands of years from now, this event will likely not happen during the summertime. With THV 11, I'm Corrales Ortiz.